So why don't we tell kids that if they promote the modern version of nuclear energy, not the old, the old stuff that was dangerous, but the modern version, if they promote that, and if they know that uh, carbon scrubbing technologies are a thing, um, they should feel good. Because not only is our generation not destroying the world, our generation made the world a lot better. My new book that's uh, available for pre-sale, Loser Think, um, is written for the same um, general purpose, meaning that it's meant to have a direct improvement on your life, in this case, to allow you to see the world in a clearer way. There, I keep seeing stories about uh, the youth of this country are having eco-anxiety. In other words, they're so worried about climate change that they're actually having mental health issues, like legitimate mental health issues. It's, it's not a laughing matter. These are, these are children being damaged by the games that adults are playing. And adults are, I say games because climate change is a sort of a political football. And in order for the adults to sell their version of climate change to other adults, it necessarily ends up scaring the kids to death. Maybe literally. I mean, I can't, if you scare enough kids, somebody's going to die because of it. At least one. It's a big country. And so, um, and so I saw a tweet from uh, Mark Schneider, our, our, <laughs> one of our uh, favorite nuclear energy advocates. And he pointed out that uh, nuclear energy is actually the cure for eco-anxiety. And I thought about it, it was like, well, that's actually true. If you were to actually uh, accurately describe the risks of the new generations, you know, the current and new uh, current and future generations of nuclear energy, and you were to tell children accurately, hey, children, it's the safest technology we have for energy. Every other technology has killed more people. And here's the thing. No matter what happens with, uh, with the planet, even the most aggressive uh, estimates are that we'll be better off in the future, not worse. Kids don't understand that. When kids hear that the climate is going to heck, what they hear is that the world is, is going to go bad, that their experience of life will be worse than the ones before. Here's the thing. Even the climate experts are not saying that. The, climate, the, the best estimate on economics is that over the next 80 years, the GDP will be 10% less than it could have been. But it will still be maybe 5 to 10 times better than it is now. So the number of people who will be poor in the future, no matter what the climate does, is going to go way down. The number of people who have a better life um, is probably going to continue going up as it has through most of human history and certainly modern history. So who is teaching the children that they're doomed? Bad teachers. Any teacher who understood the math of it, who understood the history of it, who understood that nuclear energy is just sitting there waiting to be used to solve the problem, it is. We already have the solution to climate change. We have it. Who's telling the kids that we already have the solution to it and it's nuclear energy? All right. Now, obviously, there are government reasons and political opinion and uh, or public opinion and all that. So there are things that need to be solved, but they're fairly minor compared to whatever the children are worrying about the fate of the planet. Uh, they will be better off almost in every situation. I'll bet, I'll bet there isn't one climate forecast that doesn't also have those same children better off in the future. They're just not as better off as maybe they could have been. That's the claim. That's their claim. That's, that's not even me reinterpreting what they're saying or anything. That's their explicit, public, primary claim. The things will be a lot better, but they could have been even a little bit better. 
So it almost makes me wonder if I need to fix this. Um, meaning that uh, th- this is a communication problem that children need to be um, deprogrammed. So perhaps I could write a one-pager to put the, let's say, the, the child version of what I just said into an easy-to-digest, maybe a page is too much, and maybe two paragraphs would be maximum. Because remember, it's kids, so you have to really shrink it down to its tiniest little thing. So why don't we tell kids that if they promote the modern version of nuclear energy, not the old, the old stuff that was dangerous, but the modern version, if they promote that, and if they know that uh, carbon scrubbing technologies are a thing, um, they should feel good. Because not only is our generation not destroying the world, our generation made the world a lot better. Don't you think? Would you agree that uh, when I say our generation, I'm going to take my generation and every adult, you know, from, let's say, let's say from 40 to infinity, you know, over 40. Let's say the, the over 40 generation, which you, you would argue had the greatest influence on the way things are right now. I feel like the world is way better. If you look at the amount of poverty way down, isn't everything better? than it was 40 years ago, 60 years ago. I think everything's better. And that's not going to change. And the kids need to know that. But here's the deal. Those kids are going to be the ones changing it. All right? We did our job. The greatest generation, that was you know, the one before me, fought World War II, built this country into something amazing. I kind of think they did a job. I also feel like my generation did its job. I think we did our job. You know, my generation was protesting the Vietnam War, and apparently that worked. Uh, We didn't do a good job with Iraq, but I'm not sure that was the public. That was more the government. I would like to put in the plug for my book, Loser Think. Now, let me tell you some true facts. Before you decide when you're going to buy my book, Loser Think, and before you decide if you want the audio book or the hard copy, Let me tell you a few facts. In 2013, I published my book, Kind of Failed Almost Everything and Still Went Big. And I predicted at the time that people wouldn't understand when it was published how important it would be. Now, that was the book that introduced the idea of systems being better than goals, which I think you've observed has become a common public understanding since then. That that all came from me. and then you've also heard the idea of the um, <laughs> you've also heard the idea of the talent stacks, and that also came from me and that book. Now, since then, uh, that was 2013, so that's six years ago. Uh, enough people have tried the ideas in the book that now they're getting back to me. People are saying they got promotions. They people have lost vast amounts of weight because using a system instead of a goal for weight loss. And just these tremendous life changes. People who started companies, quit their job, made a fortune. I mean, I hear, I literally hearing this every day. Every single day, somebody contacts me, usually on social media, and says, your book changed my life. Then I wrote Win Bigley that came out uh, about President Trump's powers of persuasion. And it wasn't just about Trump. It was a book to teach you persuasion in a very uh, approachable, everyday way so that you can see it happening to you. You could use the same techniques for your own benefit, for your business, for your personal life. And now I'm starting to hear those reports. So enough time has gone by that uh, I can't tell you how many people read that book, contacted me and said, hey, you know, I want a better situation in my job. And I would say, well, you know, use some of those techniques in the book. And then they get back to me and and say, I got a huge raise or I got a promotion. So Win Bigley is actually totally changing people's lives. They are getting richer by using their negotiating powers and their persuasion powers and going out and getting stuff. They're getting raises. They're getting promotions. They're doing things that they didn't – they didn't feel they had – the the tools 
to go get that thing. And then when they realize that the tools are quite approachable once they've been explained to them, then they can just take those into their boss and next thing you know, raise. So my, my new book that's uh, available for pre-sale, Loser Thing, um, is written for the same um, general purpose, meaning that it's meant to have a direct improvement on your life, in this case, to allow you to see the world in a clearer way. So the loser think is unproductive ways of thinking, and unproductive in this, this context just means you don't have experience across a number of domains. For example, when I was just talking about climate change, did you notice how I put an economics spin on climate change? The reason I can do that is because I'm an economics major, I, you know, I have an MBA, etc. So I've actually worked and lived in that world where you're doing um, projections. So when I look at the economic projections, I can just see a little bit deeper. I, I can understand them with more texture than if I had never had that background. Now, the argument is you don't need to have a degree in economics to get the basics. For example, it would be easy to learn about sunk costs. It would take me a minute to explain it to you, and then you'd know it forever. It would, it would take me maybe two minutes to explain the entire concept of the discounted value of money. If you've never heard of it, <laughs> it's, maybe, it's, maybe you should. Um, and to understand that money in the future is worth less than money today. So there are probably a dozen or so basic ways of thinking that are common to different disciplines. And if you've never been exposed to them, let's say your, let's say your channel in life had been art. If you were an art major or, let's say, just a history major and you were looking at the world of politics, you would be flying totally blind because you would be looking in one window, the window that you learned, your artist's window or your history window or whatever. You're looking in one window. You're saying, okay, I see this house and it's a bathroom. That's it. I'm only looking through one window. All I see is a bathroom. I got to go. That's a delivery. But if you can see through more windows, you can see the world better. And that's what Loser Think is about, teaching you to look in all the windows. I hope you get it. Pre-order now on Amazon. Bye.